Welcome to Chasing Tents, everyone. My name is Abi. Thank you so much for joining me for this part two of the amazing Assen track day trip. Two days uh, on Assen, the Cathedral of Speed. And like I promised to you in part one, that I'll be showing you uh, the new upgrade I'm putting on the bike, which are the amazing Akasato calipers and the amazing Billet Master Cylinder. Now, one thing you don't see me doing very often is coming to a workshop and showcasing uh, an upgrade. And I'm also not one of those people who just kind of show offs about uh, parts and stuff like that. The reason I'm making this video because I've always been a quite a hard breaker and I've always used the, the, the Brembo M50 caliper, which is OEM uh, kind of factory part on my Aprilia RSV4 RF. But with the whole endurance racing thing, I mean, I've had that since 2017 now. So I've done plenty of track days, plenty of Euros in hot conditions, British conditions. Then I did a full season of endurance racing in the UK. And my stints were anything from 57 minutes to one hour, 15 minutes, relentlessly, non-stop at 90% quality pace. So I have really taken my calipers, my road calipers, to the maximum ability they could have gone. And I did change a few things. So I, I experimented with the SBS pads. I went to EBC GPFAX pads, Brembo Z04. I changed the master cylinder to the Brembo RCS uh, 17 to 19. Um, and also I put some ventilated pistons. So I tried different things as uh, my evolution of my pace and also my stints in my uh, racing. But there comes a stage when you've tried everything and you think, you know what, I need something race specific. So that's why I, you know, the good thing about racing is you meet a lot of fast guys. And the good thing about racing in the UK is you meet a lot of guys in club level who are from British Superbikes, who are just there for having a kind of a practice race and stuff like that. So I spoke to a few accomplished racers, a few ex super sport um, and super uh, stock champions, and also current racers. And one thing, uh, which was common between 70 to 80% of those people is a Casato. So uh, I'm going to introduce you to Matt from TBR Performance because when I looked up a Casato in the UK, one name kept coming, which was TBR Performance because they deal with a Casato. And I spoke to Matt and I said, Matt, you know, tell me a bit more about these, these calipers. Matt being Matt, a very detailed person, uh, gave me a seven page essay, um, you know, a PhD thesis, I should call it, on Akasato. I said, you know what, this is fantastic. This is a man of detail. So why don't I come and see him? And why don't we make a video? So not only I'm enlightened and you guys are enlightened with information about the Akasato uh, pads, calipers and the master cylinder and watch what really sets them apart from the rest. Okay, hi guys, uh, I'm Matt Wren from TBR Performance. Uh, so Abby's here today. He contacted us a while ago about having some brake issues on track. Um, we've been involved with Akasato for about five years now. Um, so yeah, we invited him over, talked a bit of technical with him and uh, suggested some upgrades. Um, we've been running these on, our, on my own bike and many of our customers and also at British at super sport level. Price for performance, I believe about the best on the market at the moment. Okay, so let me just uh, show you a few little details about these calipers and what sets them apart and what, what each model does. So this is a small selection of what Akasato do and probably the, it's the three main types of caliper, the two main types of master cylinder and this is just a selection of pads that happens to fit these calipers. Uh, so starting with row juice i guess because there's only one of you've got the pz 011 or it's the pz 012 uh, just the different numbers are just the hole mount spacing for where it sits on a fork so generally european bikes and some of the very latest japanese bikes are 100 mil spacing now but predominantly all japanese bikes would be 108 millimeters and all european bikes bmw triumph Ducati, etc., will be 100 millimeters. Um, because these are a road caliper, or they're designed, well, they're designed for road and track. They come with dust seals, um, but they're not just a road caliper. They are a massive upgrade over 
pretty much any OEM caliper. These come with two different size pistons. The lead-in piston is 34 millimeters and the trailing piston is 38 millimeters. Uh, you see this on all sorts of different calipers, road calipers, race calipers. Uh, the reason why they do it is because when the pad is forced into the disc, the leading edge always wears away fastest or the leading edge bites into the disc. And if you didn't have this different size piston, front and rear, then really quite often you get uneven wear. So it will wear fastest at one end and slower at the other end. So to balance this out, you have a larger piston at the rear. So it's actually putting more force onto the back of the pad and less force onto the front of the pad. So you get nice flat, even wear. The other big feature about these is just the sheer size of the pistons. So in general, road caliper pistons will be between anywhere from 27 mil up to some of the larger ones, maybe 32 mil. With a smaller piston, you need more, more fluid pressure, more pressure within the system to give a certain amount of force. So force is area multiplied by, by pressure. So if you have a piston with a larger area, you can get the same amount of force with less pressure. So on the road, you're not, you don't have to, you're not constantly doing an emergency stop basically from every corner from really high speed. On the track, you are. So with, if you're constantly putting that high pressure, that pressure causes things to flex. It causes lines to flex. It causes the seals to, the, the more pressure you have, the more it pushes the seals into the pistons, which then causes friction and stiction and stops the pistons moving freely. So basically, the less pressure you've got in the system to get a certain amount of braking force, just is better for everything. It's also better, you, you need less force. You, you need to let, put less hand effort into getting the bike stopped. So bigger is better. But the problem with going larger is you then have packaging issues like that's a big area. That's probably covers 10 mil larger than the swept area of the disc. But these come in retail prices, 720 approximately. It depends on your pad, pad type. They come with free pads. They come with castellated pistons, but they're, the pistons are alloy. Again, this is for, for price. Titanium pistons are expensive. Steel pistons are heavier. We've already got a weight cost with these. So they don't want to add even more weight with steel pistons and the performance advantage is minimal. We actually race with these calipers at Super Sport in GP2 class. So, you know, they're good enough up to that level. So this is a road and track caliper. And as I said before, it can be used up to quite high levels in racing as well and still performs excellently. Uh, but if you want a true dedicated race caliper, it's designed for one thing in mind would be either this PZ005 caliper or this PZ001 caliper. There's a few differences between them, but predominantly this is a 108 mil caliper for the mountain spacing and this is 100 mil. So this would be mostly for Japanese bikes and this would be for European bikes, your Ducatis, Aprilias, Triumph, etc. What differentiates these two from this would be, it's a full monoblock design, as we talked about earlier, weight wise, there's no steel bolts these are probably the lightest race calipers on the market that i know of as you can see they've really gone to town taking out every spare bit of weight that they possibly can for these the pistons are titanium and vented doesn't transfer heat as easily as alloy piston uh, there's no dust seals in these calipers so road bikes where they might go for really long periods between servicing they have dust seals whereas these have no dust seals that reduces friction and stiction allows the pistons to move easier so but that's one thing to bear in mind if you're using these you need to be on top of your cleaning and you know after each day just give them a quick quick wipe down and get any of that nasty brake dust off the inside um, these are a two pad caliper which would be take these these are these are actually moto two pads used a lot in moto two the 108 mil caliper uses is a four pad design. Uh, one of the benefits of four pads is because you've got one piston behind each pad, then the pads will always be sitting against the disc perfectly flat. There's no flex in the pad or one piston pushing harder on the other one or anything like that. So it gives really excellent brake wear 
and the other advantage is most of the bite you feel when you first pull the lever comes from the leading edge of the pad. Four pads, you've got twice as much leading edge as a two pad design. So you get a lot more bite. Caliper design and pad combinations, some work better with others. So whereas with a two pad design, people might find a carbon pad such as this, doesn't give as much bite as a sintered pad. So they'll quite more often than not actually prefer a sintered pad to a carbon pad. When you've got a four pad caliper like this, you, they give so much bite that people actually prefer a four pad because you can end up with too much bite and it makes the brakes too sensitive. It's hard to modulate. So a big consideration for a lot of people is gonna be price and naturally pure racing products that they cost more. They cost more to produce, they cost more to develop, they sell in lower numbers, so they just cost. The normal retail price for these two calipers is £2,400 without pads. And the normal price for these, the retail price for these is £720, give or take. Akasato, because they've just launched this new nickel coating, have given the first 40 sets to the UK at half price, which is a massive saving, over a thousand pounds and a free set of pads. So the pads are normally over a hundred pound a set as well. Um, also, for both of these monoblock designs, Akasato also do forged versions, which are a lot cheaper. The forged versions are also fully road compliant, so they have dust seals as well. You can put them on your road bike, you can leave them for a, you know normal service intervals. They're fully TUV approved for road use and they're, they're around half price. They're about the same price as these billet two-piece calipers. Right, so moving on to master cylinders, um, there are two main ranges that Akasato do. They do the ready-to-brake range, which are, they come with pre-wired brake switches, which are, you know, obviously for that reason, aimed at road bikes. Spec-wise, they're actually as, internally, they're the same as the race master cylinders. They just, you know, they come with a switch. That's basically the only real difference. Uh, and styling. Then for racing, obviously, we don't need a brake switch. You can actually get a pressure switch to go with these. So you can use them on the road if you wished. It just maybe you prefer the styling or whatever. But spec-wise, that's the only difference between the two. They're both CNC'd from a lump of billet. There's no forgings. Akasato stopped doing forged master cylinders uh, around a year ago. The advantage of billet over a forged master cylinder. A forged, a forged master cylinder is made from a hot bit of metal stamped into a shape and then they just machine the bore and machine any sort of fine tolerance parts but the overall dimensions aren't well controlled. The metal's not as consistent all the way through. Just generally, dimensionally, they can't control it as well as they can with a billet made master cylinder. The benefits of, because, you could, because they can control the dimensions they can control the sealing of the master cylinder better so as brakes get hot the master cylinder end actually doesn't get that hot but at the calipers it can be 300 degrees celsius plus then brake fluid viscosity starts to go down fluid can leak past the seals it's only in very minute amounts but it it changes the feel and it it reduces the amount of braking force and what everyone you know commonly knows as is brake fade so yeah billet master cylinder in general, we just make that better, assuming it's well designed in all its other features. So when it comes to the race master cylinders, uh, ignoring the colour, you can get you can get both types in black or in this is called natural anodizing or titanium colour, depending on who you ask. Uh, basically, the main difference is you can have a fixed ratio or an adjustable ratio. Uh, when I talk about ratio, what they're talking about is the lever ratio so it's the distance between this pivot and where it meets the lever to actuate the push rod uh, it's the ratio between the length of the lever and the length of that so the number that you quite often see would be like 19 by 18 or this one's a 19 by 20 I don't know if you can see that so what that's saying is the bore of the master cylinder is 19 millimeters. That's the diameter of the piston inside. The second number is what's called the lever ratio, and that's the distance from there to there. So in this case, it'll be 20 millimeters. By changing that distance or 
getting a master cylinder with a, a different distance between there and there, you're making it easier or harder to pull the lever basically. So the further away that is, the harder it is to pull the lever, so you get less pressure in the system, you get slightly less braking force, but you get less lever travel overall. For a lot of setups, this measurement isn't too critical. It's just, it will just change how the lever feels. As long as you've got good calipers in good condition and decent brake pads for whatever your intended use is, then you're just changing the feel. With some calipers, particularly uh, like Brembo M50s or R6 calipers that have really small pistons, if you were to go for a 19 by 20, that you will get a rock hard lever, uh, you get very little feel and you're actually just making your life much harder by having that ratio because you have to squeeze harder to get the same amount of braking force. Uh, for anything sort of, you know, more standard, should we say, 30 to 32 millimeter piston sizes, you could choose either depending on your preference. I mean, and there's other things to consider as well. So quite often we find people want to run the lever super close to the bar so with the if you have a smaller lever ratio which is easier it's easier to pull the lever but you get a bit more travel you can end up too close to the bar so that's another thing to consider is literally hand size you know how strong you are there's all sorts to consider um there's some advice on the website about what to choose and if you you know if you need anything extra you can always just contact us or contact someone else who's you know knows what they're talking about really um, and like I said the other type of master cinder has this adjustable pin so you can take the pin out this pin is cammed but also inside the lever there's another cam to make sure that this push rod always stays perfectly in line with the bore so what you might find with or what you do find with some other brands that have this adjustable ratio is it actually moves the pin out of a line with the bore and you get quite a mushy feel. So by keeping it like that, you get a much crisper feel. Race, race and track, the adjustable ratio one, you're looking at around 270. For the fixed lever, fixed ratio, it's around 232 with a folding lever. You can also get this without this pivot. So just a solid lever, that makes it a lot cheaper. That's around 195. Then you've got the road version. This again, you can have this with this adjustable cam for lever fill, or you can have a fixed ratio. They're a bit more expensive. These are around 330, and the without this adjustable ratio setup, they're 240. So a little change of scenery on the table for you. I just want to take this master cylinder apart and just show you a few of the features inside. So one of the thing that differentiates what I would say a true racing master cylinder versus something made for the mass market for the road is how they set the piston height. Just get that in there. So when you pull the lever, you're pushing this piston down and this piston covers the hole from the reservoir and then pressurizes the rest of the system. Where this piston sits is critical to how much free lever travel you've got. So if you imagine there's a long distance before the seal goes past the hole, when you pull the lever, that fluid just gets pushed back up into the reservoir and all that lever travel is dead lever travel. So cheaper, cheaper master cylinders or mass produced master cylinders they don't set the height it's there's a machine shoulder they would put push the piston down and then rather than having this threaded piece here it would just be a, a disc of metal with a clip over the top of it it just holds it in that position depending on machine intolerances that might sit very close to the hole or it might sit quite far away there'll always be uh, when they design it 
there'll always be margin for error. So it's always going to verge on the side of safety. So you can tend to get a lot of dead lever travel. With a true racing master cylinder, then everything's calibrated by hand. Every master cylinder is set to give you as absolutely minimal dead lever travel as physically possible. So we do this on this test rig. Screw this down. This is pushing the piston into the master cylinder. Then we put air onto the system, compressed air. So on a true racing master cylinder, everything is hand calibrated. So you get that piston height set exactly where the hole is from the reservoir. So as soon as you press the lever, you start pressurizing the system and you're braking straight away. There's no slop in the system. So we do this by, we apply compressed air through this test rig and then we wind the piston down until we see this needle move up. Once we see that needle move up, we know that the seal is starting to cover the hole. Then you back it off just a tiny amount and then everything's set as it should be. And there you go, you can see that's just moved up one of those increments and then we back it off a quarter of a turn needle moves back down, that's now set. So with the pressure test complete, this master cylinder is now ready to be reassembled and it's ready for the track. So Akasato do a, a number of different compounds, I think six in total, four for road and track use, and they do two for off-road use, but obviously today we're talking about road and track. With every set of calipers, you'll get a set of ZXC pads free or a set of ST pads free. The ST compound is a road compound, so road and track, everything Hackset do is also, you know, aimed at track use as well. But these these work at, you know, lower temperatures. So for your occasional track day use and road use, these are, these are the pads you want. They give really good bite at low temperatures in the wet and, you know, up to medium track use when i say medium i've raced on these pads and they've performed well but they do go off you know for long races or for hot days so for the road and track st compound the, the price varies depending if it's a two pad caliper or a four pad caliper but you're looking at around 70 pounds for a two pad caliper up to around 90 pounds for a four pad caliper the next step up from that would be the carbon pads this is ZXC compound. So these are really good for high temperature club level racing. We've raced on these at BSB. We've run multiple club championships with these pads. They give a much more progressive feel. The more, the more you squeeze with these pads, the more biting force you get, the more power you feel. Whereas opposed to a sintered pad where you get that instant bite, but it doesn't build up with lever pressure. So these are really good for that. Uh, two pad caliper these retail at 150 pounds uh, four pad caliper up to 180 pounds so these are the ev1 compound these come in at exactly the same price point as the zxc carbon compound uh, these are designed to be basically an alternative to the carbon compound just in terms of feel some people prefer the, the sort of immediate bite that you get from a from a sintered compound. So the final step in the ladder would be the EV2 compound. These are what I would call their World Superbike compound. They're, these are essentially a sintered pad, similar to the EV1. So naturally it's a progression from that, it's the EV2. These have much higher heat tolerance, uh, much higher braking force in general. They're just an amazing pad. I can't emphasize how good these pads are, but you know, it comes at a cost. These are retail at around £260 a set. So the EV2 compound and the EV1 compound are both a sintered pad and they both come with a ceramic backing. So unlike a carbon pad, which has some sort of insulating effect against heat transferring into your calipers, sintered, these are a sintered metal compound and metal is obviously 
much more conductive to heat. So to just to aid on top of that, this ceramic coating is just there to help prevent heat transferring into your calipers. And again, it's just there to reduce fade. Okay, welcome back guys. I bet you needed a cup of tea after that. I surely did. And that is the main reason I kind of uh, made this video, not for a cup of tea, but for you guys to get real detailed technical information. You know me from my videos. I try to break down the kind of uh, industry jargon and, and present to you uh, stuff in a, a very layman way. But I really wanted to come here and get Matt on, on the mic um, and to really explain the real technical uh, nuance of a lot of stuff. Now, I know from a price, uh, price point of view, you might have heard prices of I don't know, £720 all the way to £2,400. But you've got to realise what Akasato is trying to do is provide you with that kind of race spec stuff uh, at a much lower price point. So you can have your kind of uh, forged stuff uh, from 500 and something pounds to non-forged stuff uh, or billet stuff, I should say, uh, to up to 2400 There are price points for every demand so if you are a road rider only there is a caliper out there for you which will be much cheaper than other really high-end brands and if you are a track day person like myself or a or an endurance racer who really kind of takes the caliper heat wise to the limit then i've got the the race specific calipers and then there there was information about the the billet master cylinder or so i should really say the race and road uh with the brake switch and all sorts so I, and, and the pads. Uh, so this is the kind of stuff I really wanted to portray in this video. There are links to every single Akasato uh, caliper uh, and the pads and everything in the description. You get 10% off if you use Chase 10. See, how, see what I did there? I did a typical YouTuber thing there, put a discount code. But I thought if, you know, to reward your patience for watching this video, the minimum I can offer you is 10% is through these guys. And that's what I got as well, you know, and a pl plus another 5%. But hey, what I want to really tell you is go to the description section. Uh, there is a website, TBR Performance. There's a lot of information on there for you to look at as well if you want to take your time and digest everything. But let's see how these calipers and the master cylinder is going to perform for me at Assen. But no high expectations, like I said to you in part one. I've not been on the track for 12 months, so we'll see how it goes. But I'm pretty happy with how things feel when it comes to uh, the brake feel while we're in the in the garage and stuff like that and uh, Matt you know spent a lot of time kind of setting my uh, calipers and, and the uh, master cylinder to to get the feel right for me because I like it a little bit of a harder feel uh, on my um, master cylinder that that's the only harder feel I like only on the master cylinder okay don't think too much anyways take care guys uh, thanks for watching this video I really appreciate patience like and subscribe as usual Put in the comment section what is the one thing which annoys you about braking in general or brands or something which you struggle with and we'll try to answer that for you. Take care. Goodbye.